Hey guys, Toolman Tim here. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. It's April 16th, 2022, and this is episode 96 of the workshop podcast. We are getting close to the 100. That's coming up quick. And tonight, I got asked last week, we'll talk about that a little more, sorry, earlier this Thursday, uh, about what my favorite DIY content creator YouTube channels are. So I decided to put together a list yesterday. Thought we'd do an episode on that. But before we do, let's get the announcements out of the way. Uh, nothing real big because things are going to slow down here for a couple of weeks. Number one, if you're not, and I keep harping on this, but man, we have got an incredible, hey, wait time design. We have got an incredible community over on Telegram. And so there's the Telegram chat group, and we also have the book club, the workshop book club, where we're going to discuss the Going Home book series. So if you're into that, come by below in the description, whether you're listening audio or watching in video, the links are there. So check that out. Uh, now, tonight is the last live stream, the last scheduled live stream for the next two weeks. I'm going to be on the road a week in Daytona Beach. And then a week split up on one end and the other in Tennessee. And that leads me to my third. Uh, we are going to be at the LFTN Living Free in Tennessee Spring Workshop. Becky and I, I am excited to meet a whole bunch of friends that I've known for a long time that I've never had a chance to actually meet in real life. So if you're going to be there, I cannot wait to see you. And if you want to meet up in person, that would be awesome too. I would love that. But just because I said there's no scheduled live streams doesn't mean there won't be some impromptu live streams while I'm on vacation. So from here, today's tool. You guys know I do that on social and now I've made it a part of my podcast as well. I was hooking up a garage door opener earlier this week and there were some real fine wires in there that I needed to strip. And when I used to have to do that, I'd have to hold my tongue right and hope that I didn't cut my thumb when I used my X-Acto knife or my utility knife. So what I ended up picking up uh, a few months ago, and I love them, are the Klein automatic wire strippers. Those things are literally the cat's ass. So if you are looking for a set of wire strippers that'll go, oh, I think it's from 22 gauge all the way up to eight or six gauge, the stuff's incredible. You put it in, click it, pulls the wire off. So if you're looking for a set of those, the Amazon link is in the description below. Yeah, and anything you pick up through Amazon, starting with one of my links, helps support the workshop and the content we create. So thanks, guys. Hey, we got Ted McDonald tonight. How are you, sir? Good to have you. So, um, automatic. Yeah, <laughs> what sorcerer is this? Sorcery is this. So wait time asks, what do I mean by automatic? I wish I'd have grabbed them from the workshop before I came in. So all you have to do is you put the wire through, you match it up to the proper gauge number in there, pull it together, and what it does is it cuts the wire stripping around the outside at the proper depth and then shoots the stripping off. So when you're done, you have a perfect clean strip every time and it's all spring loaded. It is, I wish I'd have bought it 10 years ago. I say that about every Klein tool I ever buy, but it's incredible. I'll probably, we'll have to do some kind of video on that down the road. Hey, Martinson family, happy Easter to you as well. We had, uh, I love this word impromptu lately. I don't know why I keep saying it, but we had a really good Easter today since we're flying out or heading out to fly out tomorrow. Family came by today. We didn't plan on it, and it was great. Um, yeah, so here, uh, we, I will just throw that up there for you. The Here, guys, in the chat, that's the link to the wire strippers, in case you're interested. Uh, make sure <laughs> put a space in there, but anyway, yeah, it works. Hey, Dan W., how are you? So Saturday nights are always a little more laid back. I don't have, you know, full... 100 pages of notes that I work off of or anything, but we, we do this Saturday evening catch up first. I kind of tell you about the projects I've been working on. And if you guys got any projects you want to brag about, throw them in the comments while we're talking. But so this week, first off, I conquered my garage door and my garage door opener. Saved myself about a thousand dollars by doing it that way. I was so proud. Got it really, really good all by myself. Had a couple little kinks. My brother-in-law came over the other day, so he was able to stand there. And as we opened and closed it, we could make some fine-tune adjustments. And that thing purrs like a kitten now. I am impressed. Chris Dixon gave me some insight as well. Helped me realize the chain was twisted. So yeah, always helps to have another set of eyes or somebody you can lean on when you're doing this stuff. But I don't know. I, I'm sure I told you a little bit about this garage door, but I ended up, 
uh, scrounging up some materials that I sold from a <laughs> Ted says, where do you want me to start bragging anywhere, buddy? I love hearing stories about what you guys are kicking ass and taking names about. But yeah, so when I cleaned out a couple bank properties, got some material, sold that to save up quite a bit of money, saved up all my empty cans, cashed that in, and then ended up having uh, two 25s and a hundred dollar Home Depot gift card that I had saved from Christmas, threw it all together, and I had just enough to buy a garage door and an opener. Two new skills, so I was able to save myself a thousand dollars and learn some new skills. So that was fun. Uh, my hauls this week, things I brought home. I try not to bring home too much shit, but you guys know I posted on social. I got six scepter gas cans, all different sizes, but they're part of my standardized system. Really happy about that. Got them. Uh, from the same old garage that I got the wood stove from, which we'll talk about in a minute. A couple of sheets of plywood, which was friggin' awesome, because plywood, if anybody's priced anything, hey, know your Joe, how are you? I have found, for the most part, lumber is still high, guys. I don't know why. I know it's come down a bit, but around here, it hadn't come down a lot. So anytime I can find even a quarter sheet of plywood left behind at a, an empty property, that thing comes home with me, I'm telling you. And you saw I got some scrap copper. Got a couple more little chunks today. Don't ever forget on the bottom of a lot of like Chinese made taps, that bottom three or four inches of flexible copper. Break that off, throw it in with your scrap copper. That's what I did today. Uh, the wood stove, if you guys saw that, I, I started stripping that apart last night. I, I needed some decompression time, so I went out to the garage and normally I go out and organize or putt around. Tore the doors off, got the glass out of the doors, took all the bricks out took the vents off the side. And when I get back from vacation, I am going to go crazy and sand it down, paint it, put some new bricks in it, hook it up. going to make a whole video out of that for you guys. Ted says copper's $25 a stick now down here. Ooh. Two by six, six, uh, two by six, six cedar, like $45. Oh my gosh. I don't, I, I honestly thought we were heading out of it. It just doesn't seem to be. I don't know if we just got to kind of accept it, but the price is crazy. I just bought the exact same material for the daycare the other day that I bought last summer to build the exact same size deck. What is it? 16 by 24. And there was no decrease at all. Started pricing up metal roofing for my garage. I was fairly okay with that price. It's a little over a grand to do my garage and a little under $400 to do the insulation in the roof. So that's not bad. Um, fixed a gate. I, I've shared with you guys a few times, but I have this concept called a zero job. And it's one of a couple of ways it works, right? <laughs> Ted says he's still waiting on the vehicle he ordered last November. I'm sorry about that. It's one of those things, you know? So my concept of zero jobs, if you've seen it, you know, I, I've been asked a lot, like, how do you decide what to save and what not to? I basically save anything that has some serious value for construction materials. So I have a whole melt crate full of what I call heavy metal. <laughs> and I don't mean like you know, Metallica or Pantera or something like that. It's like hinges and gate latches and anything like that. And it all goes in there in case I need to fix a project. And then also the scrap lumber. So I went out to my daughter's. She has a rental, but she broke the gate off her fence and needed help fixing it. We had to wait for the ground to thaw so we could fix it. Did that up. Didn't cost me a penny other than my time and the gas to drive to her place. So I was happy with that. I uh, picked up, I haven't done any pictures on this yet, Metallica. Yeah, I love Metallica. <laughs> At least they're older stuff, you know. I uh, picked up a couple of old Morse code keys. I'll uh, I'll do a video on them down the road, but they were, uh, the, the guy that ran them was the very last telegraph operator here in my town. There are two of them that came from the local train station. I'm pretty proud of them. They're a pretty neat little item to go in my collection. And the coffee site. I have everything done. I thought it was up and running, but the shopping cart hasn't been activated yet. Should be Monday. And then I will post on social all about that. I am so excited about the Canadian Coffee Company. We've got some serious some serious blends in there that I really like, and it's coming. So just hang in there, and I am sorry. This has taken longer than we'd expected, but it's working. And I, yeah, the coffee's worth the wait. Chris Dixon's messaged me like three times asking me, buddy, when's your coffee going to be ready? And I keep trying to tell it's coming. It's coming. I promise. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So if you guys were here Thursday evening when we did the, um, the last live stream, we had, man, we had an awesome uh, community interaction that night. It was so good. 
And uh, so, yeah, we, uh, K Bonk, he was in here, had a lot of good questions for me. And he, his question was, do you have any good resources for skill building topics, audiobooks, podcasts, or good repair videos, content guys? So I thought, you know what? I'm going to turn that into a show. And then I thought, well, what am I going to do for Saturday night? I like low key shows on Saturday night and I'm, you know, heading out on a jet plane. Don't know when I'll get, well, I do know when I'll get back again. So I figured, hey, let's do that. So I put together my top 15 YouTuber DIY content creators. So I'm, I'm, yeah, it'll be fun. We'll go through it. Then I'll share with you guys a little bit about my process for how I learn a new skill. Ted says he's ready to drink some of that Ethiopian coffee. Hey, it's good too. Don't worry, it's coming. <laughs> and uh, Waytime says historic telegraph keys equals CW in style. Absolutely. Yeah, they're neat. I'm going to restore them. They get brass and, and I, it's not... It looks like some sort of artificial stone, but it, I don't know what it is. I'll, anyway, it's really cool. I'm, I'm excited. We'll get it up and running. Hey, Chris Dixon, your ears must have been burning. We were just talking about you. Okay, so I made my list from first to last or whatever, and then I opened up all the windows from last to first. <laughs> so we'll try to do this without going too far ass backwards. Share my... Uh, yeah, Ted says he's ready to critique these YouTubers. Absolutely. So, okay. So I hate to say, hey, quick dub, nice to have you. So I don't want to say like one is better than the other. I just, there's certain ones, uh, everybody finds a YouTuber or a content creator that you click with or you enjoy their, their teaching style. And I think a lot of it has to do with you end up liking people who are very similar to yourself. So I, that's part of this. And I don't want you to say like, oh, this one's better than the other one. I mean, I, I did, I went from 15 to one and the top five are definitely my favorites, but they're kind of all over the place. So uh, I just wanted to share this before we get into it. Know Your Joe says, store that we go to for dog food was out of what we usually get. Supply is spotty. Was able to find it at another big box, another bigger store. They had three bags, pre and pro plan. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if you guys saw that, but there's a baby formula shortage right now. Um, uh, it's, we're, we're not heading in a great spot. I'm not like a doom and gloom guy. Uh, you know, I, that's why I prepare so that we don't have to deal with it. But I don't think shortages are going to get any better anytime soon. So all we can do, guys, is prep and prepare and stock up on the things that we can stock up on without taking advantage of supply lines. And hopefully we have what we need. And in the meantime, we can chat about DIY or YouTubers. Now, these are not tool reviewers. These are not homesteaders or preppers. We will do all of those. If this video and audio is a big enough hit, we'll do a bunch more down the road because heaven knows I love making lists. So this is the first one. This is the handyman. He's got 433,000 subscribers. Each one, I'll tell you, we're not going to spend a ton of time on the first few for sure. Um, but yeah, so he... He talks about his handyman journey, how to develop a handyman business. So if you're looking, you're like, oh, yeah, Tim knows what he's talking about, but we'll find somebody else. No, <laughs> uh, this guy's great. But yeah, he does a lot of flooring tips, bathroom tips, just a lot of DIY tips and tricks. That's all there is to it. And I kind of enjoy him. Uh, he's a hustler in the good sense and just always out there willing to share what he knows and, you know, trying to get other people to get their hustle on and get out there and make money. And this guy, yeah, he's really good. It's a really, uh, I, I like the design of his videos, the design of his page. And it just, every time he puts something out, I enjoy it. And just to make sure here, he's got, I know his been, yeah, handyman's content is all right. Yeah, that's what Ted says. Remember, these are mine, but no, <laughs> I like them. They're not bad. And yeah, he puts out stuff about once a week. So if you're looking for, oh, and guys, the entire list, so... I want to do this so that it's good for audio and for video. So if you're interested in checking any of these out, all 15 of the links are in the video description and the podcast description. But like he's got stuff like paint ceiling and walls in 10 minutes. Um, and then if you're into like wanting to do some serious tile work, he talks about Schluter, uh, which I've never learned. Um, and then he shows proper ways to cut expensive tile. <laughs> One quick dub already sneaking through and looking at my list. 
just pretend like you didn't read his comment there, guys. But he says, essential craftsmen really helped me building my cabin. I had no idea what I was doing. And he is an absolute treasure. And we're going to get to that one. So yeah, so number 15 is just plain old called the handyman. And if you're looking for somebody that has a lot of good tips and is going to inspire you and kick you in the ass to get stuff done, he's a good one. Now, number 14. Uh, this is Robert Daly. He's a buddy of mine. But his stuff is off. I love his content. Um, I want to show you one down here. Let's go down just a little further. He did an awesome video. I don't think I can find it right now. But the work he does, I, I just watch it and I'm like, oh my God, I wish I could be that good. But I, I don't have the patience for this kind of woodworking. But his dog crates are like generational furniture. He shows how to make family heirloom products. And he I, the way he does it is so simple. And he doesn't get overcomplicated. He doesn't take too much time to, or he doesn't go into like, he doesn't use all technical terminology, just shows you what he does. The stuff's great. And he also made, I can't find the video right now, but he did a great video on a, an under the back seat of his truck. He built these really nice wood sliding drawers for storing a whole bunch of, uh, just, it was a really good spot to keep all of his unused kind of materials. And he's just an, and he's a really good guy too. He, um, you know, he's a good family guy, but his channel's awesome. I love it. So check out, um, he's gone under a bit of a, a rebrand. Uh, he, it was Robert Daly, Daly Woodwork, Woodworks. And now I believe he's calling it recreational woodwork now, but just a good guy. And his, yeah, like I said, oh, some of the tricks and tips he shows you in the, in the cabinetry end of stuff, top notch. This one here, Country Life Products, 32,000 subscribers, really good channel. I, I enjoy it. Uh, come on down here. Now, this, this is the only channel that is kind of a dead channel at this point. Um, everybody else that I list are regular, everyday kind of, I don't know, like they're, they're, you know, regular uploaders and content creators, right? This one here, basically, when I built a shed two, two winters ago, I followed his process step by step and I had never built, you know, stick framed trusses before. He showed me how to do it. I mean, mine weren't perfect, but I was able to learn and the way he did it, I didn't have to go to a hundred different areas to kind of find, all right, how am I going to build this shed? What am I going to do? His stuff was great for that. Let's see if we can bring up a little more of it here. Yeah, and so here you got like how to build a shed. It's a whole series of stuff. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. He just stopped making content four years ago. But the stuff's really good. So if you're if you're looking at building one, start with him. It's called Country Life Projects. And like I said, the link is in the description there, guys. Uh, this one's really cool. I like this guy. He reminds me a lot of myself. <laughs> He's Bald Eagle 242. Doesn't have a ton. I don't know. Anyway. The one video that I started with with him was this 18 simple trailer upgrades. And this guy goes into, it is a, it's only a 15 minute video and he has all kinds of stuff, just chock full of upgrades for just your simple utility trailer. The guy's a genius and he should have way more subscribers than he does, but he does a lot of stuff on upgrading and repairing lawnmowers and a lot of automotive stuff. But honestly, his trailer upgrade and his trailer videos, again, top-notch, good stuff. Uh, John Grohl says, the handyman also has handyman business about the money side. I'll have to check that out. I did not know it. And uh, Ted McDonald says, I like essential craftsmen for a boomer. That's fair. I like that too. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, yeah, pretty good. I like essential craftsmen quite a bit. Uh, yeah, so from there, uh, this guy, if you guys have ever seen The Honest Carpenter, I like him. I, I'm going to guess he's a little younger than I am. Not a big deal. But uh, he has some, again, really, really good DIY videos. Uh, and I like things in lists. You guys know that. But he has things like, uh, you know, four signs of roof failure, 11 circular saw, saw mistakes. He's got a playlist on raised garden beds, uh, fixing deck boards, rotted door jams, uh, the most useful tool in the world is that like seven in one painter's tool. Uh, don't use drywall anchors. He just, I like the the way his content is. It's, it's short, it's digestible. Most of the videos are kind of in that five to six minute range. And yeah, his name's Honest Carpenter. He's got, a uh, what's he got here? Uh, almost 600,000 subscribers. He's been around a long time. 
and you guys can notice here just so, <laughs> for anybody watching on the video these are their their views and then mine just kind of hide right here at the bottom <laughs> but uh awesome yeah another really good channel and uh yeah you just he's a teacher and i i tend to you know when you look at so when i break down my analytics for my channel most everybody the majority of my channel viewership is guys like me middle-aged guys from north america and i tend to watch most channels of middle-aged guys from north america and <laughs> i think we are drawn to the same type of people that we are and people with the same type of attitude and the same kind of can do attitude and so that's why i think a lot of these you, you'll notice are very very similar but yeah the honest carpenter another great one now this guy here the next one is veteran construction i don't know if you guys have seen him but last year when i was i had to learn how to or i wanted to learn how to bend fascia make the corners like the box corners really nice had never done it before didn't know where the hell to start what to do, how to do it. Just like, I figured I'd just make it look like a pile of poop. And this guy is just an awesome teacher. He basically focuses on roofing, siding, and fascia, and soffit. And oh my God, you watch him work and he's so fast and it doesn't look like he's doing anything at all. And then he's done. And he has to sometimes remember to explain how he's doing it. And a lot of times he'll have another guy up on the roof with him talking to him while he's doing it. And he's just a really good teacher little gruff and rough around the edges, but I kind of like that. And yeah, so, and he does videos on like, you see these special peaks and different things for roof. He does a ton of roof stuff. And then a little bit on like J trim, aluminum work, all that. Just another pretty, pretty good channel uh, called Veteran Construction. Got just under 50,000 subscribers. Next one. This one is got to be... <laughs> Uh, oh, funny carpenter. No, I've never, you know what, guys, this is great. So if anybody has any suggestions, uh, Ted says funny carpenter, he's great. I have not seen that channel yet. So anybody has suggestions, throw them out and I'll mention them so we can check them out together. Uh, so this one here is got to be the most boring channel of all of them. But you know, I spent all summer, I know I've talked about it a thousand times, reciting my garage and my home. And this channel was a lifesaver. And if you're looking for just top quality content that has zero entertainment value to it, <laughs> the Vinyl Siding Institute is where it's at. They have breakdowns of, I mean, I don't know how many videos they have, but they have just literal breakdowns of every step of putting vinyl siding on. And they just, you know, I think they stopped uploading about two years ago, but I mean, there's vertical siding, there's uh, H, H trim. Uh, how to properly sink nails. There's just, there's no end to it. Like how to start your vinyl siding, how to finish your vinyl siding, all of that. And it, like I said, the content is not stimulating at all, but it's short and it's super simple to learn. They, they shoot everything, I think on a sound stage, So it's all, it's all like fake brand new construction, but it makes it really easy to follow along. And to be honest, I went back and searched my history for vinyl siding and about three quarters of everything I watched was from this one channel alone. So if you have a project coming up that you're looking at doing vinyl siding and you want to graduate from YouTube University, this will be your professor for sure. Uh, now, so the next one is a bit of a cheat. I just couldn't not put him on the list. Uh, you'll see in a second here. It's Project Farm. Now, he is not strictly a DIY guy. He is more of a tool review guy. But uh, I am going to guess that just about everybody listening audio or video has probably heard of project firm and if you haven't wow his channel is incredible he's got almost two and a half million subscribers he buys everything out of his pocket i'm sure he uses you know ad dollars and stuff at this point and patreon that kind of thing but he basically you know every week he will have a head-to-head -head of yet yeah, cabot porter says love project firm absolutely he's got an infectious sense of humor He's happy. You can tell he loves what he does and he's blessed for doing what he does. But he'll have like, I don't know, the top eight reciprocating saws and he'll buy all eight of them out of his pocket and he'll run a lot of this stuff until it dies or tape measures, whatever it happens to be. And he'll figure out a, a way to wear these tools down and wear them out and test them in laboratory conditions, but what simulate real world conditions. And he, whenever I'm looking at starting a project or buying a tool to do something, or if I'm looking for the best adhesive, that kind of stuff, he, his stuff is great. Just 
all are awesome. Yeah. Entertaining and test to destruction. Absolutely. I loved guys one time. He, he, he owns his own, or he bought a paint shaker from somewhere and he made a, an ammo can that he could mount to, um, basically he put it right on the paint shaker and then he filled it full of nails and sawdust. And then he put each tape measure in there and shook the living shit out of it for who knows how long. And he had, yeah. And, and then he would bring it out and then he would test the retraction and see what would happen. And he's just so ingenious with that kind of stuff. And he, he spent obviously a lot of money and time building his content, but I mean, he's got almost 300 videos and he puts one out a week. He did a showdown last year on the best types of engine oil. And it was, the content's just great. He, he never bores me. I don't watch every video of his, but I bet you I watch three quarters of everything that comes out. Ted says Project Farm got straight YouTube bucks. Yeah, I am sure that man does very well with his channel. And I good for him, man. Like I am, you just shoot to follow in some people's footsteps like that because he is, he's honest. Or, I mean, he appears to be honest and he always stresses the fact that he takes no donations. Everything comes out of his pocket. He even did knife sharpeners. The knife sharpeners twice, I think. And that's how I ended up buying my Lansky sharpening system because I watched it. I was like, oh, yeah. Andy did water filters. Like, it's just so much. So, yeah, if you're looking for a guy that'll tell you this is your best glue or this is your best caulking or this is your best stain remover, he is the guy to check out for sure. Now, um, the next one, if you are into, this is one of the very first YouTubers I got into when I first started my business. And it's you, a lot of you guys may not watch him because a lot of you aren't into lawn care. But if you're into starting your own lawn care business or, well, also hiring employees, keeping employees happy, working your ass off all the time, and all kinds of tips and tricks and hacks for making lawns look good and getting them done right and proper every single time, Blades of Grass Lawn Care, he's incredible. I can't exactly remember where he is. He's down south, like to the point where in some areas they actually spray the grass. They paint it green because, you know, it's that dry. But he is entertaining. He's always on the go. And it just, uh, yeah, if you're ever thinking about running a landscaping business, if you watch him, you'll be happy. And of course, along the way, you learn how to, how to build business, how to store your tools, uh, tips and tricks for edging lawns properly. I He's the one, I mean, simple, simple stuff like, you know, when you mow up against the sidewalk, <laughs> you point the discharge in on the lawn. Um, they, they tend to not bag their lawn at all, their clippings at all. They tend to leave them on. They just mulch them. But something I learned from him was, you know, when the grass clippings get on the sidewalk, you blow them back into the grass and they disappear. And I was like, huh. Because for a long time, I was always trying to like, just, you know, just stupid things when you're new. I was trying to blow them around and get them into an area where I could sweep them up. And he's like, no, no, you just blow them back into the grass. They're going to decompose quickly and, and they instantly disappear. So just simple little things like that. But he's always full of hacks and tricks. Sometimes he even shows you his own backyard, the projects he's working on. But that man works all the time. Next one. Now, this guy is awesome. I only came across him a few months ago. <laughs> Oh, Ted says, losing all the grass in my community to lethal vi viral necrosis. Going to cost over a million dollars to replace. Might be time to put sand or rocks or cement or something in. Who knows? But that's crazy. Uh, okay, next one is Bush Radical. Now, if you guys, this guy is entertaining. He's got almost a million subscribers. He would be the closest thing in the preparedness and homesteading field that I still consider a DIYer as well. The very first video I watched his, I don't know if I can bring it up here, but so there's a couple things he does. He builds off-grid cabins and he his videos are in-depth. Like this one here, 41 minute video on building an off-grid cabin from start to finish. And he, he has everything broke down into like 10, 15 minute bite-sized chunks. And he shows what he does. He's got, you can see a couple different, one cabin on stilts, one on the ground, metal roofing. He's always building and he shows how to do it. But he, uh, let me see if I can bring it up here. He did an awesome, awesome video on hand driving a well. There it is. Antique, antique hand pump well, start to finish. It was a 25 minute video, which doesn't sound that long, but in YouTube terms is super long. And I followed him right from start to finish. And as soon as I finished that video, I subscribed to him. 
He was just, well, he's entertaining, so it's easy to watch, easy to listen to. He teaches well, and uh, it's informative. Every, he doesn't waste a lot of time with, you know, all the other stuff, backstory and all that crap, right? It's just, here's what we did, and watch me do it. It was great. I, I, Him and my number one choice uh, would be the two that are close to preparedness and homesteading. This would be the closest for sure, but if you ever had dreams of heading off into the woods and starting up a homesteading, you know, community or just building a bunch of off-grid cabins, he's the guy to watch. And he even has some Harbor Freight sawmill stuff, uh, first impressions, that kind of stuff. So if I ever move to the States and can actually buy stuff from Harbor Freight, might give it a shot. Now, the next one, some of you might groan, some of you might laugh. I don't know. This old house. Now, I grew up, I don't know, I grew up in the Bob Vila era of this old house. So if anybody else has ever watched this old house, give me a thumbs up or say, yeah, you know, because I love that show. I watched that Sunday afternoons on PBS as a kid for years. And it was always, you know, up and down the, the East Coast, New England. And they always, you know, they had the funny thick accents. If John Dowie, if you're listening, you know, like John Dowie, I, I could talk to him all day, right? <laughs> um, but what I end up finding is probably 50% of the time that I go searching for a how do I, how do I do this? How do I do that? This old house is one of the top uh, returns in my search event for sure. Yeah. Waytime Design says, good memories watching this old house. Dan, Dan W says, this old house is great. Yeah. Pa oh, hey, Pappy. Nice to have you. I always love seeing Pappy in here. Uh, thumbs up from him. Chris Dixon says, love it. Ted gives some strong arms. Absolutely. So yeah, I love this old house. Like I, I watched it, you know, basically for Bob Vila days and then yeah, the, the Yankee, the, the old Yankee workshop guy got on there and he was okay too, but I liked Bob Vila. And I just loved watching all those Victorian homes get tore apart and remodeled to look proper. I remember watching videos years ago from this old house when we owned the old 130 year old home down there of how to take out the old sash windows and put in new inserts. And after I watched a couple of the videos, man, I kicked ass at it and did it. But uh, the most recent was when I took it upon myself to install a natural gas feeder line to my, well, first off, to my natural gas barbecue. And yeah, Nate, Norm Aber, and that's it. I think I got, yeah, yeah, very dry. Knowledgeable, but dry. That's an exact way to explain and describe Norm Abram, Chris Dixon. You are right. Didn't have the personality of Bob Vila. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> You know, um, it was kind of like Tim Taylor was Bob Vila and Norm Abram was Al. Just kind of, oh yeah, you know, but anyway. But yeah, so there's some great videos on there on how to hook up natural gas. And they don't ever say like, I mean, they say get a professional to do it, but they show you every single step all along the way. And they're they're just great. Yeah, I, I've always, always enjoyed them. Uh, <laughs> oh, Hunter says these ads. Are you guys get? if you're getting a lot of ads, tell me these things because... I don't know. I mean, obviously ads bring in income for me, but I don't ever want them to be to the point where they absolutely drive you guys crazy. Um, and with, uh, what do you call it? Live stream, it is really hard to control. I don't get to see it with pre-recorded stuff. It kind of, you know, I get to choose how many show up with live stream. It just, they just keep going. So yeah, uh, you can email me too, if you ever want to, but yeah, that, that's good to know. Thank you, Hunter. <laughs> because like I said, we only have so much control on my end of it, right? But yeah, so this old house, there's so much there. And I mean, honestly, if that was the only channel you ever watched, you would be able to find as much information as you ever need. And like you said, the content's great. Sometimes <laughs> Norm Abram's a little bit uh, dry, like to the point where you're like, ah, oh, I think maybe just I need a glass of water when you're done listening to him. But Ted says no ads here. That's weird. Anyway, yeah. So this old house. Now the next one. So, okay, we've got one, two, three, four left. And I got to say, and this was not on purpose, but of my last four, two of them are Canucks, fellow Canadians. They're really, hmm, I don't know, two of the only Canadians I follow on YouTube. Just weird. Yeah. So number four is Steve's Small Engine Saloon. He just hit a half a million subscribers. And if you haven't watched him, I think the reason I like Steve so much is he reminds me of every small engine guy I ever met. Well, not every, but most of the small engine guys I ever met out on the East Coast, Nova Scotia, where I grew up. They have an affinity for beer for some reason. Steve always starts his episodes with opening a beer. He loves his beer. 
and he is he's hilarious and he just reminds me of the backcountry folk that i grew up around and was part of he's just he's a really good guy and so this is 100 small engine work he just he he will always his stuff's very specific so what i'll find is if you're looking for an answer to something search his channel and you'll find it but i don't always watch every video that comes out because sometimes it's on random gear that i don't ever have any interest in dealing with right but <laughs> way time design says mm, beer yes and I, I got a big bottle of bourbon up there that i didn't dip into tonight but uh when i get back for sure um cabot uh porter says yes yeah, start start to finish for the live stream so yeah okay um the the ads it, yeah sorry guys i'm but it's good to know pappy says no ads chris says i never see ads just to start and finish so okay i can live with start and finish ads too but yes way time beer yes very good and uh, bourbon, even better. I was talking to somebody tonight about some bourbon. So yes, Steve, small engine repair. He's from British Columbia. Entertaining. And he always has some great uh, hacks and tips and things like that. Like uh, his uh, easy way to remember, which the O and I means for on and off. Uh, best way to fix a surging engine. Number one way to adjust the carb. Just all of that. And yeah, so if you're looking for a good small engine guy and you only want one, Steve is your answer. Plus, like I said, he likes his beer, and I enjoy that. Now, the next one is the best drywall channel I have found. Another guy from BC, Vancouver Carpenter. And if you've never watched him, he's almost hit 400,000 subscribers, and he deserves it. He is a hit. Chris says, mmm, bourbon. Yes, absolutely. Vancouver Carpenter, uh, he has got very a very, very thick West Coast accent, West Coast Canadian accent. It, it You know, it's endearing for him, that's for sure. And he has all, <laughs> Ted says, one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. That sounds like a grown-up fairy tale or grown-up nursery rhyme. I like that quite a bit. Or an adult version of a Dr. Seuss book. I like that a lot. <laughs> but yes, uh, Vancouver Carpenter, anytime I want to learn how to do a specific corner or a specific finish or just, you know, how to fix things that are out of line in drywall, he's got a video on it. And he puts out content every week and it's always fresh. He'll do like a, a tool uh, tool bag dump once in a while show you the tools he's the guy that gave me the idea to keep one of those foot long slot screwdrivers as a pry bar and that has been one of my go-tos from day one i use that more than anything i used it today to pry on you know them stupid plastic washers that uh you tighten down a set of taps for and quite often they're really tight and you can't get a wrench on them well yeah a drywall channel hunter says yes <laughs> and yeah he's a really good guy he he I mean, you would think that you would get bored with drywall, but he does a good job showing it. But yeah, I use that uh, 12 inch slot screwdriver to pry those pieces off. It's just, yeah, he always has that kind of stuff. And he has like super fast and super easy tips, how to fix open miters. He does, you know, a little bit on painting, a little bit on um, baseboards and casing, but he just, you know, when I was casing out windows last year, it was his videos that I was watching because it'd been a while since I did it. Uh, Ted says drywall. You got to watch Paul Peck drywall channel. I can do that. Another great representative. Yes. Does Ted say Vancouver Carpenter? Is that a yawn, Ted? I can see that. He can be a little bit dry. That's for sure. Uh, but <laughs> I guess that maybe that's the Canadian in him. He's just so damn polite that he he just kind of, uh, but he, yeah, he, I've learned a lot from his stuff for sure. Paul Peck drywall tube. Okay, cool. We'll check that out. Now, the last two are absolute YouTube gems, in my opinion. And the first one, of course, uh, who guessed it earlier? I can't remember. I think it was, we'll go back here. Um, I won't find it now, will I? But yeah, so anyway, somebody guessed my, they were looking at my notes earlier, and it's Essential Craftsman. I don't know. I am sure there are other people on YouTube that have more knowledge than this man. But he is like talking to, I don't know if you guys remember, he is like, he, he reminds me of chatting with my grandfather. Now my grandfather has been gone for 35 years. So, but he reminds me of chatting with anybody's grandfather, right? He just, he always has the answers. He knows what he's talking about. I, I don't, if his videos are scripted, it blows me away, but he can, he, he's been a general contractor probably for longer than I've been alive. And he will show you how to lay footings for running uh, cement pads. He'll show you one of his best videos was uh, the best way to use a chalk line. And I mean, that sounds so boring. 
And I was absolutely enthralled. And I think the first video I ever watched of his was the proper way to climb a ladder. And he had just all these tips and tricks to show you just based on decades and decades of experience. And he's got that, you know, old man come sit down or, well, I don't think he sits ever. I think he, he likes to, to work while he's talking and he just, he, there's just so much that he does. And he has an approachable personality and yeah, like uh, you, things like you string like a pro. I mean, how boring does that sound? And I got so many tips from him on um, using a circular saw and his tape measure pro tips was just spot on stuff. I've always learned from, uh, you know, how to, in this one right here, this was so great. I, you know, you start to forget how you pick up some of these hacks and productivity tips and stuff, but he did a whole video on how to be productive and, you know, you hate to shit on the next generation because I'm sure they shit on us, but man, that's the type of thing that young people coming up could really, uh, take a lesson from because productivity, you don't have to work hard to get a lot done. You just have to be efficient in your movements and your patterns. And this guy is an absolute master at being efficient in what he does. Like it was really cool. And then this, this one here I watched ages ago, uh, two before becomes a Jack. He puts a cut in it and yeah. Uh, Ted says he saw the chalk line video. I think they, some of these videos pop up and they start getting fed out in the, you know, out into the feed, they hit the algorithm and everybody wants to watch them. But the chalk line video was just so, so good. But yeah, this guy, he is. Yeah, you could listen to him. He's kind of got the personality a bit of Norm Abram, but I, I think he's much more um, listenable. I'm sure I just made up a word or don't use it, that word at all. But yeah, he, he's pretty good. And he has some stuff on blacksmithing and different things too. But really when it comes down to, uh, yeah, uh, Quick Dub. One Quick Dub says, I've watched most of his content. He's an amazing YouTuber. And he is. Oh, and speaking of open another can. There you go, guys. Uh, yeah, he just, I mean, his content and... It's part of the reason we all, I think a lot of us do this content creation is hopefully it's a legacy that in some form or another outlasts all of us. And you think about guys like this. Yeah. Dan W says, I love his videos uh, and so much old knowledge there. Like all of this stuff, you know, he's not a young man, but you know, he, who knows how long any of us will be around. Right. But all of that stuff helps people every day. Thousands, you know, like how many views does he have here? Let's see. He's had 150 million views. So, you know, even if that represents 10 views per person, he's helped, you know, one and a half million people now. And his videos are going to be on there for years to come. Just teaching all new carpenters, the next generation handyman, everybody coming behind all of us. And his stuff is just spot on. Like there's never a video that lets me down. So if you're interested, check out The Essential, um, the essential Craftsman. And he's got, you know, he's been doing this for, uh, let's see, I, I want to say close to a decade. And he just, yeah, second that old knowledge, Ted says. Yeah, he's good. And let's just sort these by oldest. Let's see. And he's been at this six years. And he's he's got a million subscribers. He's doing really good. You know, he started with things like running a power hammer, a blacksmith's anvil, uh, cutting string, falling white tree, if white oak, you know, just grass-fed beef. And then his channel has gotten more and more specific. But he's just, he's full of good stuff, you know. Uh Hunter says, I mean, yes, dry instructors are well dry, <laughs> but if I'm looking to learn something specific, I don't need the horseplay. Tell me what I need to know. I'm usually stuck in a project. Ain't that the truth? Yes. Be specific. That's something I, I, I've probably shared with you, but I struggled with for a long time. That's why I like this long form live stream stuff. But in my regular videos, I really struggle with keeping it concise because I know personally, when I click on a how-to video, I want to learn how to. I don't want to learn... Uh, you know, well, we all use the joke about when you're looking for a recipe and you find a blog post and the first 3000 words are why she, you know, why she cooked this for her vegan brother, sister-in-law that uh, just loved it and always had to have it. And, you know, they don't ever show you the recipe. It's at the goddamn bottom of the page and you got to scroll through everything. And that's the same way with long, uh, long filler videos. But yes, I agree. Yeah. I, I'm not saying that I need to be entertained per 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 se. It's just, I find that I learn from certain personalities better than others. You know, the information's there, great, but sometimes my brain just doesn't quite take it like it should. Now, the very last one, and I absolutely adore this channel, is Silver Symbol. And every time I try to say it, my tongue trips over it. 
He is a New Englander, so he really reminds me a lot, again, of the community I grew up in. Uh, he's from the Boston area, I believe. I was from Nova Scotia, but so he deals with a lot of the same stuff, same type of winters, um, the same type of heating. He, he deals with uh, furnace oil down there a lot, which is something that, you know, people outside of the East Coast don't. Um, <laughs> Chris says, like going to a firearms course. They talk two hours about how qualified they are to teach this. Yes. If you're up there teaching, give me 10 minutes of your history if you want to, but I've already paid for it. I already accept that you're an expert and I will base what I think about you based on what you teach me. I don't need to be told the whole time about it. So from there, uh, yeah, so we've got Silver Symbol and it is, okay, so he does a ton of DIY stuff and a ton of generator videos. So he is right up my alley and I don't even know where to start. But let's talk about his generator videos first, because he has shown me a whole whole bunch of battery generators, and he has gotten into, like, he's big enough now that people send things to him all the time, like battery backup systems. Um, this one right here, I can't find the name on it, but it's just incredible. There was a Canadian one that was ruggedized from the military, and he just shows all of this stuff. And I love it. It's, he's really good. Uh, Chris has a fist bump there. Yeah, this guy's great. Now, he also does a whole bunch of this other stuff where he does a whole bunch of like video. Sorry, guys. Um, a whole bunch of things on lawn grass and things like that. Just give me one second. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so we <laughs> just had somebody walk in there. And uh, yeah, so he has a whole bunch of generators. Uh, the stuff is awesome. And um, yeah, uh, the so he did another hand drive video, um, a video on how to hand drive a well. And it was great. Uh, and he does like, he's a big fan of the uh, shark bite fittings, which I love. He did kind of his shed. He does some solar stuff. Just check him out if you want to. Uh, oh, and of course, Seafoam. He absolutely loves Seafoam. Uh, uh, Ted says, uh, probably my favorite, my new favorites now are Stud Pack. <laughs> and Waytime says, this has been great. I've subscribed to several new, new to me channels and I've ordered an automatic wire stripper. Well, thank you, Waytime. I appreciate that. It <laughs> absolutely. And hey, Rational Anarchist is in here as well. Appreciate that too. Um, and yeah, Chris says my arch nemesis, the lawn, I hate lawn, such a waste of time and resources. This guy has some of the coolest. Yeah. Silver symbol is my home shopping network. He has some of the absolute best tools that you are going to find. There are like, he had one of these landscaping rakes that looked like something you would see on a golf course. It was just so, so good. And yeah, it was, you have to check him out. Like his stuff. Yeah, and he's he's entertaining, but he's not like you know he's that middle aged kind of guy from from uh, he's got the thick Boston accent. Let's see if we can find a couple of his videos. To obviously we're not going to play them because yeah we wouldn't do that. But see if we can bring up like he has yeah. So lately he's been doing a lot of these things: how to fix a loose toilet paper holder, best way to cut PVC pipe, universal battery charger, uh, screwdriver wars, leaky shower head, all of that, and then. He ends up getting some of the best early adopter, what do you want to call it? Um, like, well, right here. Okay. He had the Snowbot, and I thought that was one of the coolest things. I thought it would be awesome, and it was a complete piece of shit. And the guys that were doing a Kickstarter for it sent it to him, and they're like, hey, review this. And he takes all of it, and I want to tell you, he is honest in his reviews. And this thing is just not ready for uh, mainstream yet. So... So check him out. It's for sure. He even did a how to restore a wood stove. Just all around really cool kind of guy. Reminds me a bit of, I don't know if you guys saw that video or the channel a couple of Christmases ago that went viral. It was dad, how do I? And it was a guy who did a whole bunch of videos on exactly that. Dad, how do I? And uh, because it was for kids that didn't have a dad, right? And it was, yeah, it was just really awesome. So check him out. I To me, Silver Symbol is... The one that every single time a video comes out, I watch it a couple of times. And I've probably reposted more of his stuff on social than anything else. 
I reached out to him once to try to get him on the show. Didn't get a response. That's okay. I will reach out to him again. So if anybody happens to, to know the guy, <laughs> that would be awesome. But I'm going to, yeah, I will continue to reach out to him because I would love to have him on the show to pick his brain about all of these new, he's never even really settled on a name for it, but it would either be battery pack or solar generators, the kind of stuff that's going to be the only option in uh, California soon, because, you know, uh, they hate gas and that kind of stuff. Rational Anarchist says, my boys are 11 and 13, and I didn't even cut grass last year. Oh, that is wonderful. I mean, I do it for a living, but uh, I've got a guy that I'm going to sub out all my grass or most of my grass work to this summer. I'm pretty excited about it. means I can focus on my, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, my property management and let him deal with all the rest. So yeah. Um, now the one other thing I wanted to share with you, because this was kind of, you know, people ask, well, how do you, how do you learn a new skill on YouTube? What do you do? Where do you go? So I, I wanted, um, it was kind of fun because when I put this list together, let's bring me back up to big here. I decided it was like, uh, I went back through my history to see a lot of the, the, the channels that I would go and check out a lot. Right. And so I thought, well, last year, one of the last things I did before fall was I took the fascia and I put the, the white aluminum fascia all the way around where my eaves troughs were. And for you Americans, that's gutter. Sorry about that. And so I thought I'd share real quick how I use YouTube. Now, a lot of you guys are probably like, oh shit, I know all this. And if you do, that's great. But for people out there who are like, I don't know where to start. How do I learn on YouTube University? This is what I do. So I always use how to in my search. Don't know why but it always seems to bring me back the best results. So if I'm looking to search for a new topic on YouTube, it's simply, I type in how to install fascia. That is it. And so I work my way through and I normally, we talked about this earlier. Oh, <laughs> good night, Ted. It's nice to have you, my friend. Always enjoy your company. Um, how to install fascia. And so I, I focus on five to seven minute videos because those are the ones that you know are long enough to have good content but not too long that the guy's just going to yammer on about how good of a contractor he is, right? Watch a few of them and don't be shy about turning off the ones that aren't helping you. If you're not feeling the vibe, go on to the next one, on to the next one. And the key here is to not drown yourself in content, okay? So I watch three, four, maybe five videos on the how-to, depending on, sometimes I'll get the first one and I'm like, good, that is a good how-to video. And then the next thing I go is I search tips for installing fascia or tricks for installing fascia. And that tends to, so normally the how-to is like a broad overview. And then the tips help me kickstart <laughs> my knowledge, right? So what, what do they say? Um, you know, knowledge is knowing and wisdom is screwing up and then learning. So it kind of helps kickstart your wisdom because they show you some of those um, shortcuts and tips and tricks that the old timers have used for years that you might not think of until, you know, six months into a job. But if you can learn it ahead of time, you might cut two hours off the entire job. So then I watch a couple, two or three tip videos. And then, you know, there's a few other keywords you can throw in there, but best, fastest, easiest, learn to, those are always the ones that I use when I'm looking for the next step. So I start with how to, and then I go to tips and tricks because that's kind of like, okay, now I know, now I need to save a little bit of time. Um, yeah. Rational says there's not much you can't YouTube how to do, even finding info on my 60 year old tractor. It's incredible. Like, I think about uh, there was the video a while back, or the, the channel, the lady since passed on, but it was um, Depression Era Cooking, and she was just incredible. I can't remember her name, but she was just she was an awesome lady, and she shared all of her videos or all of her recipes from the Depression. And it was so enlightening to watch, just that kind of stuff, you know? But so I, I start with how to, then I go into tips and tricks, maybe throw in a couple other keywords there that we talked about. But for me, the key is don't overwatch. So don't get stuck in, uh, you know, not yet. I'm not ready. You know, um, analysis paralysis. That's what we're looking for here. So don't overwatch. I, I set myself to 20 or 30 minutes. I'll usually watch the night before I'm going to do a job. And then I start first thing in the morning. The last thing I want to do is sit on my ass and start watching more videos on how to. Start attempting the new skill. So for me, with the fascia, it was, okay, I know, what do I know right now? Well, I know how to cut it to length or to height, so I have it. But when it got to the corner, I was like, okay, 
where do I go from here? So bring out the phone and I rewatch one of the videos I already watched. I don't start. Yeah. So that's the thing, right? Wait time. So I think what I, yes, I'm exactly saying don't fall down rabbit holes because you can start watching videos on fascia and three hours later, you can be watching, you know, eight ancient fencing techniques from the Middle East. Like it just, it's just how it goes. Right. So <laughs> uh, Chris says there are, there are a, uh, there are very few good videos about why my wife is mad at me again. Yes. Because you should know, Chris, you should know if, if, if you really cared, you would know why she's mad at you. You don't need to watch a YouTube video to know. You should just know my buddy. But yeah, so, so how to tips and tricks, 20 to 30 minutes. Don't go down that damn rabbit hole because then you got too much beating around in your head. Then start the skill. And then if you get stuck, go back and rewatch the one video that stuck out at you. And that works for me. That's, uh, yeah, there we go. Blow Tor Hi, Blowtorch. Said her book was Clara's Kitchen. I liked her channel so much I had to buy her book. Thank you. You see, this is why I love our community. It's just great because there's always people out there that know the answers to that kind of stuff, right? So much. So that, yeah, that's great. Check her out. She's been gone probably, I want to say like eight years now, but I remember about a year, maybe, oh no, it was the beginning of uh, COVID. So two years ago, I don't know if it was her nephew or grandson that was doing the videos. He came across a bunch of old content he had of hers and he put together four or five more videos. It was really cool. Uh, yeah, Hunter says at way time, right? How to repair a hole in drywall leads to figuring out where the penguin is, uh, where the penguin is from by its accent. <laughs> See, that's exactly it. And I know that's what the algorithm is there to design, but set yourself a time limit. Sometimes what I do is if I'm trying to learn something new, I, that's what the front fa uh, front facing cameras for, Chris. He said, about, <laughs> um, sometimes when I'm trying to learn a new skill, I'll set a timer on my phone. So I'll set myself to 20 or 30 minutes. And then when that timer goes off, boom, I'm done. That's what I do when I'm writing short scripts too. Hi, uh, Hogs, Hogs14. I'm not sure if that's it, but it says, hi, Tim and chat. Nice to have you. I don't remember seeing that name in here before. So it's great to have you. But yeah, so um, be careful going down the YouTube uh, <laughs> rabbit hole because you can get stuck in there. And what do they say? A little bit of information can be dangerous, but too much can be overwhelming. So you got to find the balance of when you're trying to learn a new skill. That That's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, everything... I guess we're all in this boat, right? But everything I've learned, I didn't know before I knew it. <laughs> and that might sound absolutely foolish, but that's the way it goes. None of us are experts and we just have to learn as we go. Just be be open to failing because uh, if you're not, you'll never try anything. And there's lots of things you can screw up on, but it, it is, yeah, just be open to trying new things. I was, uh, honestly, I was intimidated by siding the house last summer. And my wife was like, Becky, you know, she, you can do it, hon. I know you can. And I thought, oh, you know, I didn't want to push myself. And I, I hemmed and I hawed and I thought, well, let's price somebody to do it. And I thought, no, it's just going to cost way too much money to do that. So I decided to do it. And you know what? I got to say, that was probably the single biggest confidence building exercise I've ever done. I really feel like there's nothing I couldn't do now. And, you know, if you knew me, but didn't know me real well, you probably thought that about me already. But I'm I'm actually at that point now. And that's where we get, you know, baby steps, right? I always talk about the what about Bob. You guys remember that movie where, you know, he's like, baby steps, Bob. And he's like, oh, okay, I can do anything if I just take a little baby step. And he's like, you know, baby steps to the door and baby steps down the stairs. And then all of a sudden, you're at the end of the road and you're like, wow, I made baby steps and I got all the way to the end and I learned something new. And that's the key, right? Is just to start. And also, uh, one other thing, don't overthink it. So if you're looking to, let's use the, the example of residing your house again. If you're looking to reside an entire house, don't watch every video on how to side a house from beginning to end. Just watch the videos on how to, how to get starter strip up there and how to mount your corners. And once you have that, get going. Yes. And Rational says... I like to watch videos well in advance of a project to get the materials and tools or decide on the method, then watch some again just before it's time to do it. Yeah, and that is, that's a good point. And that is something I do subconsciously quite a bit is when I'm starting to think about a project, I do start watching. Like I'm I'm getting ready to, <laughs> yeah, I, I murdered their name too. Sorry about that uh, for hogs or ho ho hostages. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, but good to have you either way. But yes, so 
because sometimes you got to plan your tools, right? You're like, oh, I want to buy a new tool, but I don't know what I need. What's the best tool? Watch those tips and tricks videos. You're like, oh, all right. Well, a set of aviation snips, uh, a square, a level, a good hammer, uh, a tool belt, all of that kind of stuff. Um, also, when I started siding last year, I realized I think I need a rigid utility knife instead of my beautiful fastback flip out Milwaukee knife. And it was, yeah, I got it. Ended up not using it. I like the, the fastback one better. But yeah, that is my trip down the YouTube rabbit hole. Um, if you guys like this kind of stuff, just tell me. Like, uh, you can uh, interact with me on uh, social or you can email me. But I was thinking down the road, we might do one on the best homesteading channels that I follow. Maybe the best preparedness and prepping channels. I got some great ones for that. And of course, my best tour review videos because our buddy Joseph will be on there for sure. And <laughs> so yeah, you guys know I love to talk about tools and it's a good way to get Ted in here because he will he loves talking about tools too. And if you guys, if you want to do, we could do a community sourced episode where you guys all send in your maybe top three or top five or something like that. That would be a lot of fun too. But beyond that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this list. Uh, I am going to be uh, officially on vacation when this live stream ends. And uh, it's funny, but I honestly miss doing my podcast while I'm away. It's a big part of my life at this point, and I enjoy interacting with you guys. I love the fact that people come in and shoot the shit with me. We have a really great community. And it doesn't mean that I won't go live over the next two weeks. But what it does mean is I don't have to go live. Uh, I've got five 15 minute podcast episodes, five or six pre-recorded to go out over the next week or the next two weeks while I'm gone. Uh, it's all of a kind of a how to start preparing. I wanted to put a series together like this. I'm, I was excited. I wanted to, and then when it's all said and done, I'll probably put it all together in about an hour and a half shareable, but it's the type of thing that you guys can listen to and learn from. But more importantly, you can share with your friends who are like, geez, I'm scared about this or I'm scared about that. And I don't know what to do. So thank you, Waytime. Thank you, Martinson. Uh, it was great to have everybody in here tonight. We had Cabot Porter, Rational Anarchist, uh, Blowtorch Sky, <sighs> Hogs, or Hogs, I don't know how to pronounce that, 14, Waytime Design, Dan W., Hunter, yes, Chris Dixon, and I'm sure I missed some more. Ted was in here. We had a great community tonight. So thank you guys absolutely very much. Quick dub, there you are. And yeah, so thank you guys. We will catch up. On the flip side, in two weeks, we will be back. The numbers will actually be out of whack for a bit because I'm not doing the 100th episode until I get back so we can have some sort of celebration. So guys, as always, <laughs> stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great two weeks while I'm on vacation. Take care, guys.